In the previous videos, we generally concentrated on transient performance, transient characteristics, and we generally talked about the overdone case. In some cases, we talk about the performance uh, specifications and their association with overdone and critical done case. I think we already know uh, a lot about how we can apply these techniques for overdone critical done case, but uh, I would want to kind of close the uh, content, uh, I mean, transit specifications for overdamped and critical damp cases. Okay, so if we talk about overdamp and critical damp cases, okay, so let's get first to the pole zero plot. Okay, so we have something like this. Okay, that's great. Okay, that's nice. So uh, for a critical damp case, we know that we have a double root case. Okay, we have a repeated root here. Okay, so in this case, we know that P1 is equal to P2 and it is equal to some uh, minus sigma, sigma is positive, okay, which is technically uh, measures the magnitude or the distance to the origin uh, in the negative field axis. And in the overdamped case, okay, let's change the color, we have two poles, okay, they are both real, one of them is here and one of them is here, okay, so let's change the color, okay. So nice, okay, so one pole is here and other pole is here, that's great. And we know that uh, P1, okay, in this case, okay, the color is bad, so, okay, so let's make it mm, black, just black. Okay, so we know that, okay, in this case, let's say if this is P2, is this P1, you know that P2 is less than P1, or if you look at the magnitude, magnitude of P2 is greater than magnitude of P1. Okay, good. So. Uh, if we draw uh, the, uh, let's draw it, uh, transit response or step response of the system, which look like this, okay? So I have y-axis, okay? That's great, and let's draw the x-axis, that's great, okay? So let's go in this, okay? So if uh, I draw the step, steady state response, and let's assume that this is step input, and this is equal to one, uh, for both cases, the, the output will look like something like this. Okay. Okay, so it will look like this. Okay, depending on the P1, P2, critical number of them, we can just shrink it to the left or shrink it to the left, but this is the whole idea. Okay, and now let's try to uh, talk about how we can compute or at least talk about uh, the transient performance characteristics that we majorly talked about over them systems. First of all, oh shoot, okay. And I will talk to them. Of course, the overshoot percentage of normal is equal to zero, and it's equal to zero because because the overshoot is about how the response exceeds how much the or, uh, the amount of the exceeding uh, overshoot of the system in the slide. Okay, since we don't have any output that's about the steady state value, overshoot is equal to zero, and it's a good thing. Okay, and it's meaningful. Okay, so overshoot is exactly zero for overdamped and critical damped systems. Okay, so we can talk about this and it's exactly equal to zero. That's nice. Okay, that's good. So what about setting time? Okay, so what is setting time? First of all, setting time is technically the time where the output reads an uh, error threshold that is defined uh, around the state state will 2% or 5%. Let's concentrate on the uh, 5%. Okay, so because the difference is not very critical. Okay. So let's assume that this is the 5% line, okay, and setting time is the time here. Uh, first of all, just using the definition, we technically uh, can uh, certainly talk about setting time for overdone and critical damp systems. Okay, so how we compute that? It's, it's actually it's easy. Okay, for critical damp case, okay, uh, since we have two components, okay, one is like e to the power sigma t, of course, we have a constant plus another constant t times t to the power of sigma t, and because of t, this will go to zero faster. What we will do is we will concentrate on this part and compute the setting time value uh, using the, the technique, the, the uh, exponential. So for a critical damp systems, the setting time, of course, this is still approximate. It's approximate equal to four divided by sigma for two percent and for three percent. It's 3 divided by uh, sigma. So technically, we use the exact formula that we use for uh, overdamp systems. And as you know, in uh, overdamp systems, we have two complex conjugate roots. And in order to compute the setting time, we use the uh, projection of the pole on the real part. So we do the same thing. Okay, so what about uh, 
over that case, we know that we have two poles. Okay, again, I always talk about this when I was first introduced to transient response. And I said the basic idea is in an overdamp system, okay, what I have is simple. At the output, I have a constant, okay, e to the power minus, or not, let's call it just P1, okay, minus, uh, okay, no, P1t plus C2e to the power P2t. And both of some uh, sigmas, okay, c1 e to power minus sigma 1 t plus c2 e to power minus sigma 2 t, both sigma 1 and sigma 2 is real. Okay, so they both go to the zero faster. Of course, I have a constant here, so for that, okay, they both will go to zero, okay, but which one will dominate the behavior? The one that is slower, okay. So which pole is slow? The one that is close to the imaginary axis. So technically, what I can do is in an overdamp system, I can approximate the behavior as a first order or critical damp system. You can think about that. And I can ignore this and I can compute the setting time uh, just using the pole that is close to the imaginary axis. In that respect, of uh, if P1, okay, and this is slow 1, if P1 is simply equal to minus sigma 1, P setting time is approximately equal to 4 divided by sigma 1. Okay, that's it. Okay, uh, setting time is easy. We can compute them. This is an okay approximation. And uh, technically, this is okay approximation for both overdamped, critical damped, and underdamped systems. There could be some errors. We know when we simulate the system. But this is a good comparable approximation of the setting time for overdamped, overdamped, underdamped, and critical damped systems. That's it. Okay, so if the uh, system is undamped, it never reaches the steady state. Because it's oscillatory, so setting time for undamped systems is equal to infinite. That's also meaningful. Okay, so in that respect, okay, we already know that MP is equal to zero. Maximum percent error should, and that makes sense. We can talk about the setting time. That's good. Okay, now let's talk about the peak time. Okay, so what is peak time? Uh, we don't have a peak, right? Peak is happening at infinity. So TP is equal to infinity, okay, so it is meaningless, right? And it's really meaningless because peak time is really, really specific to the overdamped system when we have a peak, okay? So which look like this, like something like this. I have a peak, I can measure its time, okay? So for this reason, it's really, really meaningless. If I want you to compute the peak time, you really uh, should know the fact that I'm talking about an underdamped system. So peak time is useless. We don't even need to talk about peak time for critical damp and overdamped systems. Okay, that's great. So let's clean that. But what about rise time? Okay, so rise time is really nice time. Okay, it's kind of slightly important for uh, overdamped systems or underdamped systems because it measures the time when I first hit my uh, steady state value. It's the rise time. Okay, so in addition to the setting time, it really measures some sort of speed of convergence to the steady state. Okay, so I need to use both of these times to characterize the speed of an underdone system. Setting time is nice, but in, when I talk about the rise time, I also talk about when I first reach the steady state. Okay, and now let's talk about an overdone or critical time system. Since it never reaches uh, to steady state value, Rise time is equal to infinity. Okay, now you can say that rise time is specific to all damp systems, so it's a meaningless. Actually, it's true. This specific rise time is meaningless. It's because, okay, so this is a critical damp system, okay, or, or over damp system, and this under damp system. If I use this threshold, okay, let's look about this. This is the setting time of under damp system, and this is the setting time of over damp system. Of course, uh, setting time for the specific case over time system is higher than setting time of the under -time systems, so I can compare them. But infinity. Now let's look a bit about rise time for an uh, uh, under time system. It's true that rise time for under time systems always larger than uh, smaller than the setting time under time system, and it makes sense. Okay, rise time happens first, setting time happens last, and I can use both of them to correct the speed of the system. And if I talk about that overdamp system or critical damp system, I have setting time, okay, which is a typical value, like one second, ten second. It can be better than or worse than the underdamp case. But as you can see, if I write tr is equal to infinity, it's infinity, 
it is super bad, but it doesn't mean that this response is super bad. Okay, for that reason, we don't use this definition of rise time for characterizing the speed of convergence for overdamp on critical damp systems. Okay, there's another definition which is not used very much, especially in the textbooks, but uh, practically it's very nice for both characterizing the rise time for overdamp, critical damp, and underdamp systems. Okay, so let's clean them. Okay, so let's clean everything. Okay, so let's draw and again. Okay, this is one. Okay, like this. Draw a critical damp system response. Okay, so let's assume that or over time it doesn't matter, but this way there's no solutions. So it looks like this. Okay, that's great. Okay, and then what I do is since rise time is kind of meaningless, I label two different types. Okay, so I look at a, a threshold another threshold okay it's, let's call it okay where the output is equal to here y set state times 0 0.9 when i look at the 90 percent of the state state value and here i look another point okay that's here and this is y state state times 0 0.1 which is equal to the 10 percent of the state state value I look at this time, okay, let's call it T1, I look at this time T2, okay, a, a new rise time definition that is practically used but not used theoretically or uh, technically in the textbooks, T bar R is the time difference between T1 and T2. So this is a, a rise time definition that you can use, uh, of course, to characterize the performance of the system and it's really useful comparing both overdamped, underdamped and critical damped systems. And it's really a good comparison uh, for practical purposes. Why we don't use this much in uh, our courses is simple. Because computation of this really requires you to do the simulation. There's no good approximation or like nice uh, closed form th uh, that can help you to compute this uh, rise time definition. But keep in mind that this rise time definition exists and in your engineer or like academic life, in order to characterize different controllers, different systems, you can use different this uh, type of rise time definition, which can be helpful to you. But from this perspective, okay, if we go back to the original definitions of our systems, uh, what we can do is if your system is overdamped or critical damp, okay, setting time is technically meaning. It has a meaning. It is useful. It's important, and we can compute them easily. Overshoot is equal to zero, but it has a meaning. Really, there is no overshoot and it shows a great performance in that perspective. The rise time original definition, it's really useless. You don't even need to talk about that. And it's technically infinity. Okay, you can say that it is infinity, but being infinity doesn't mean that it's a bad controller or bad system. Okay, similarly, peak time is really useless because there's no peak. Peak is happening at infinity. In order to talk about peak time, we really need to talk about an over uh, under that system.